What are we doing now, Tessa? We're filling tanks. Filling tanks? Mm hmm Explain to everybody how filling tanks works. All right, well, first off, we have our compressor, which compresses all the gas, which brings us to our cascade tanks, and then it goes into the filter box. The fill station? Fill yep. station. Um, and it goes into the tanks, but we got to make sure the tanks are hydrated and viz, and we have a checklist over there to make sure we're doing everything good. So we got to make sure everything on the checklist is checked off before we fill the tanks, correct? Correct. And these are the ones you just got done visiting, correct? Yeah. Awesome. What's up guys, that's Brian again from Lake Hickory Scuba Marine. If you are new to our channel, do me a huge favor, hit that little subscribe button right here and ding that little bell as well. That way you guys are gonna be notified every time we upload new content. Now in our last video, I kind of went over why you should be getting your kids involved in your life, whether it's scuba diving or whatever industry you're in. And even Tessa was showing us how she was uh, learning about vision tanks, she was learning how to fill tanks and things like that. And we got a couple good questions about how does a scuba compressor actually work and why can we not use say a standard air compressor to fill up tanks. Well, in today's video, I'm going to walk you through the process of how the scuba compressor actually works, how our fill station works, and even how our O2 system works as well. And that'll give you a better understanding of how bottles are actually filled. So with that being said, let's jump into today's video. All right, guys, as Tessa finished filling up these bottles really quick from our last video, let's talk a little bit about how the compressor system works. We're going to be looking at the compressor system, the fill station, the cascade bottles. We'll even look at the O2 station as well, and that way you guys will have a better understanding of how things work. Now, one of the questions we get is, why must you use a scuba compressor? Why can we not use, say, a typical air compressor like this to fill up your tanks? Well, in short, this has two major flaws. One, it only goes up to about 150 PSI, which is no Nowhere near enough air to actually put into a scuba cylinder and the other problem this guy has there's no filtration system on it so there's no filter to get rid of all the bad impurities that we don't want to be breathing when we're underwater so basically in short this is a scuba compressor this one goes up to about 4500 it can go up higher to about 6000 psi and then of course in the back this is where our fil filter is and then there's also an oil and water separator on the other side as well. So we're getting rid of all the impurities and contaminants that we don't want in the cylinder. And basically it all starts right here. So this is the air intake system here. So air is being sucked into the intake. It's getting cleaned, dried, and compressed, goes through the compressor, and then it feeds the fill station. But before we get to there, let's go back to the intake because you'll notice I've got this tube that comes down, it goes up through this plastic stick, and then it goes out through the wall. So let's walk outside. So basically, we have transferred the intake to this filter right here. Yes, that's a pop coming through, and yes, I know it looks crazy, that's a lawnmower filter, but basically this filter keeps all the bad stuff from out here out. Not bad contaminants, but contaminants such as spiders, bugs, and critters that we don't want in there. Basically, that's what that filter does. So we're pumping the air from the outside, the atmospheric air from the outside into the system versus pumping it straight through the intake here where we've got a bunch of bad atmospheric air in here. So that being said, we are pumping the air from the outside, the atmosphere, atmospheric air from the outside in through the nitrox stick into the compressor. Now we will come back to the nitrox stick here shortly because I'll show you how the O2 system works. But basically we're pumping air in, it's dried, clean, compressed, goes through the system, and then it goes over to our cascade bottles here. Now we can feel directly from the compressor straight to the bottles or we can use the compressor to fill the cascade and think of the cascade as a bank system so we have nine banks here we've actually got several other bottles that we don't have installed currently but basically we have excess amount of air here stored up and then that air goes back through the fill station and we got all these fill ports here that we can connect cylinders to and pump that air in. And the cool thing is, is we don't waste air by cascading it this way. Sometimes you do waste air if you're running the compressor, and not so much the air, you're wasting a lot of different things from power to um, filtration systems, everything, 
Cascade is a much more, more efficient and better way of doing it. Now let's jump back over here to the O2 system. Let me explain how this works. We'll talk about the nitrox stick first. So since the air is already coming through the nitrox stick and being going or going straight into the compressor itself, basically all a nitrox stick is, is there are agitators inside this. Some people put baffles in them. Uh, we actually use wiffle balls of all things in there to agitate the air. So as we turn the compressor on, air comes down through the stick and then we actually pump in with this hose right here we pump in oxygen into the mix so it's mixing inside of the stick and then it goes through a sensor here at the bottom which we read through an analyzer there and then that pre-made nitrox or pre-blended nitrox gets pumped straight into the compressor system, it's dream uh, dried, filtered, and compressed, and then it can either go inside of a cascade bottle or it can go straight into your bottle. Now, as far as partial pressure blending, it's a little bit different situation here. We are actually using Pure O2, putting that in your cylinder, and then moving your cylinder from the O2 station over to the fill station to top it off with air. So basically how it works, we have another bottle that's set up for partial pressure blending. It goes through a booster, and if you're not familiar with what a booster is, in short, if you have more pressure inside your cylinder than what's inside this bottle here, we can't transfer it. And a cool little fun fact, these are low pressure systems. These are only 2,400 PSI bottles. Most scuba cylinders are gonna be 3,000 and higher, yes, they they do make 2400 and lower, but the majority of them is going to be 3000. So if we have more pressure inside one of these and we need to top it off with oxygen, there's less pressure in here, we can't do that without a booster. The other great thing about a booster is we don't waste O2. I can literally take this thing all the way down to about 100 PSI before I've got to switch it over. So it goes through the booster itself and you've actually got to have a drive gas. The drive gas is just plain old regular air and we use that as a drive gas as well and then of course we've got another fill whip here that fills up your bottle with O2 to whatever pressure we need. Then we transfer your bottle over to here and then we either use the bank tank or the compressor if we need to if we don't have any air in the bank tanks and we top it off. Once that's done then of course we can analyze your bottle and see what kind of nitrox blend you've got. All right, guys, I know that was a crash course in how compressor systems work and, you know, how do we actually use them, but hopefully it gives you a better understanding. If you are interested in a course that's going to teach you about the compressor and how to mix gases, check out the SSI Gas Blender course. This is an extended range program, but there's no diving involved. You don't even have to be a technical diver to do it. It's just a program where it teaches you how to blend nitrox, and it's going to go over to three different ways, whether it's a membrane system, partial pressure blending, or continuous blending, which would be through a stick. And depending on what store you go to, they may do one or all of the above methods. So you're going to learn all of the different methods as well. That way, if you go out and buy your own compressor on O2 system, you can safely blend your own gas. And to be honest, if you've got your own scuba compressor and you're not fluid with it and know how to use it safely, I would encourage you to take that class as well. It's a great class all around. You're going to learn a lot of mathematics in it, but more importantly, you're going to learn how to stay safe when blending nitrox or other gas mixes. And there's two different versions of that class. There's the O2 version where you learn to mix nitrox. There's also the tri-mix version where you're learning to mix helium into it as well to get a tri-mix blend. But guys, I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give me a big thumbs up. Definitely, if you got any questions, drop me a comment down below and I'll try to help you out the best I can. But I'm gonna get over here and help Tessa finish off these bottles. We've got a lot planned this year and I want you guys to stay tuned. As a matter of fact, we are going to be featuring more younger generations of divers in our videos for 2025 and we hope that's going to encourage you to get your kids involved and to get other younger divers brought up in this industry. The scuba industry is hurting right now. It's really low in its numbers and we need to get people involved and the best way to do that is to get the younger crowd really interested in it. So stay tuned because we are going to be producing videos that are going to help kids get better interested in it and also help them learn as well. But guys, that's going to do it for today's video. As always, take care, God bless, and I'll see you in the next one.